I want to be the gray head. I want to be the old guy that keeps coming back. And that takes innovation. And I like tinkering. Obviously, I, I speak with health professionals. We change my training a little bit. And I think that there is something that I like about that. I like just want to get the absolute most out of me as an athlete. And obviously, I've learned a lot just Will as a man and a, and a human on this journey. And welcome to Pursuing Health. I'm Dr. Julie Fouché, family physician and former CrossFit Games athlete. Here, I bring you information and inspiration to help bridge the gap between fitness and medicine and support your journey toward your healthiest self. Thank you so much for joining me. Now let's get started with this week's episode. Hey there, welcome back to Pursuing Health. This was an episode I recorded over on the Wild Health podcast with multi-year CrossFit Games athlete, Will Morad. It was too good not to share, so I hope you enjoy it here as well. All right, well, we are here today on the Wild Health podcast. I am one of the Wild Health physicians, Dr. Julie Fouché, and I am here with Will Morad, a professional CrossFit Games athlete. He's headed back to his fifth games this August in just a few short weeks. And he's also been using wild health this season to help optimize his performance and his health. So thanks so much for joining me today, Will. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm excited because I think, you know, we've never really spent time together. We've never really chatted, but I know our careers just barely overlapped. I think your first CrossFit games was 2014, which was my last CrossFit games. And so, and you've had really two careers since then in, in CrossFit. (laughs) So I'm excited just to hear more of your story and your experience. Um, but I mean, maybe we can just start with what your background was prior to CrossFit and how you got into CrossFit. I know you were a soccer player. That's really, I think the things that I knew about you from the central (laughs) East was like, there's this new guy who played soccer and now he's really good at CrossFit. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of used CrossFit to supplement my soccer career from like 2007. Um, Once I signed like a letter of intent and was going to go play college soccer, I was working at a, like a fitness, like essentially like a lifetime fitness here in Nashville. All my buddies in high school who were also going to play college sports, we all kind of were just like, oh, let's make some money and work at this place and we can like work out for free. Sounds like a great job. Yeah, it was awesome. So this was our senior year and uh, one of the trainers there was a CrossFit guy and he didn't really, like he saw us working out and we didn't really know what we were doing. We were just kind of like doing bench and the pull-ups and Mm -hmm. like the the pull-up machine and all that stuff. And he was like, Hey, why don't you guys come try this stuff out? Um, And we started doing some intervals and we, I think Angie was our first workout we did like the hundred, 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 hundred. Yeah. Um, And it kind of, caught my attention. I was like, oh, this stuff's working. I could see how my performance and on like the soccer field was improving. Mm -hmm. So I just ran with it. And throughout my college career, at least in the off seasons, I would always come back to CrossFit and like just do Olympic lifting. And um, Murph was like always a preseason test I used. (laughs) No, no, no weight vest, but it was just like a good, like 35 minute rip for a, for a soccer player. And then, uh, yeah, so I had a I had a good career at Belmont University, which is a school in Nashville. Um, I had an opportunity to go play pro soccer in a few different organizations. So I actually took off my senior spring, mm. and left school, wow, and pursued that career. Did the combines and all that stuff. And that when that fizzled, I went back to school just to finish my degree. Mm-hmm. I was studying exercise science at the time and started doing CrossFit to kind of scratch the itch of just, I was still, I mean, I was 21 or 21 and just a young man who liked Mm -hmm. to work out. And, uh, I'd been following the CrossFit games, like watching the 2011 games on just on my laptop Mm -hmm. at the time. And I was like, Oh, this seems pretty cool. And rich was rich and easy. And Dan were all in Cookville. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was to get my scholarship back. I was a GA for the strength and conditioning department. Oh, so I was cool. work. I would go to class. I'd coach some uh, teams. Um, and Easy was actually, I don't know if he remembers this, but he was applying to be a GA as well. And he was at Belmont one time. No way. Like meeting with the strength coach. And he was like, hey, 
uh, are you doing CrossFit? Like I was doing double unders in the hallway. And I was like, yeah, man, like an easy was one of the guys back then. Right? So I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. So small little side story there. But yeah, so then in 2013, I ended up qualifying for regionals mm-hmm. um, and doing pretty well. Like Central East, we're pretty good athletes. Very, and, very competitive for the men, especially. Know, yes. It's yeah. crazy how there's such a concentration of I guess it's really Tennessee and Ohio. There was just such an epicenter of great male athletes. Still, still. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, well, Saxon, Scott's brother moved down here. So he's actually lives oh, like a mile Oh, all right. You're bringing them all now. to Tennessee now. Yeah, and everybody's coming to Tennessee now. <laughs> but yeah, so had a had a regional at, in Columbus where we lunged on the concrete floors and mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> was like, man, maybe I could be all right at this. Like five of the top 10 guys in the world or like four of the top five guys in the world were from our region. And I Mm -hmm. finished like 10th or 11th that year and had just been doing it competitively for like a couple months. Mm -hmm. So I committed the whole next year. I coached full time at a gym and just trained and ended up punching my ticket to Mm -hmm. the games in 14 and kind of made it a career signed with Reebok uh, and a supplement sponsor and that was it. The rest Off to the is history, right? Yeah. The rest is well, crazy. It is, <laughs> it's totally crazy, right? And then yeah. how your your life just changed so much um, from yeah. that one season. But but obviously, you know, the Central East was tough. Like you said, a high yeah. concentration of the top athletes in the world were in that region. And at the time, it was usually only the top, what, four or five who could qualify to the games yeah, every three, year. Three, three the first year. Yeah. The first two years I competed and then like this whole super regional thing happened. But. Yeah. So, so then it, the next couple seasons, you just narrowly miss. And sometimes it was by mm. like less than a second, which is yeah. so crazy. It still stings. <laughs> totally. Totally. How do you, I mean, I see my sense of you is that you have this kind of optimism and always see the glass half full, but I mean, experience like that has to be hard. How did you, how did you process through that and then continue to have the drive to keep going and not get discouraged being in such a tough region? Yeah. So what's well, your career first mm-hmm. off? So it's like, you got to keep working even if you're sick or it's not, <laughs> like you, you, you don't make a sale or whatever your, your job is. Um, so yeah, I think 15, I had, I had a fractured first rib at the regional actually, which was kind oh, of wow. like, we had the snatch, we had the handstand push up or the handstand walk. Yeah. We had the, uh, overhead squats. I mean, you got, you were banged up at that one too. If I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah, it was a rough <laughs> and, one. yeah, rough one, a little worse than me, but <laughs> Uh, yeah. So like I had that and I think I was at peace with kind of like, okay, well I finished seventh that year. Um, and was totally in, like I was messed up. Right. Mm. So you kind of like give yourself a rest. You're kind of like, that sucks. Like I didn't accomplish my goal and like Mm -hmm. to compete with the best in the world again. Um, but injuries happen. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, in 16 where I was like probably the fittest I had been in my life up until that point. Uh, and I just like had a rough weekend and mm. I finished sixth and barely missed. It was like a second, like you mm-hmm. said, and that stuck with me. Like I would wake up in the middle of the night. Like it was bad, like PTSD almost. Yeah. Cause it's like everything, you your put whole identity. everything into it. Yeah. Yeah. And that like, that stuck with me for a while, probably like three or four months where I was just like, mm-hmm. I kept training and stuff, but it like, it was like the sleeping and like waking up, you'd like wake up and like you had done the workout, even though it was in the past and you're like, wait, dreaming Anyways, about so, it. Yeah. Yeah. Dreaming totally. about it. And you kind of, when you're a pro athlete, like it is everything and it's so consuming. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I think it was just like dust yourself off and keep going. Like I've always been like that like that strive gene in me Mm -hmm. if that's a thing right is Mm -hmm. it's just really strong I've been an athlete my whole life I've always just been competitive I was the baby or I am the baby in the family and it's like you probably lost a lot of battles there as a little kid and you just got used to keep keep going no matter what yeah exactly like just dust yourself off and keep going yeah um yeah, and then in like seventeen, obviously, I was yeah, that was the like push crazy. again, and then I had the whole kidney failure, and then misdi or diagnosis turned out misdiagnosis with the kidney disease, 
Which yeah, we have to we have to back up and years. talk about that one. This yeah, is a big sorry. thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so tell us about so you just, you know, you're you're getting over 2016 and and the waking up just thinking about it and you're going into yeah. the 2017 season. And so you go into Wadapalooza, which is one of the marquee events outside of the games season. Um, usually it's held in January in Miami. And yeah. tell us what happens. Yeah, so I'd had a great prep the year prior. I had podium there, um, so just good memories in Miami. Mm-hmm. And uh, I did the first event. It was assault on Fran, which is like heavy thrusters and echo bike or assault bike. One of the bike, one of the air bikes. Sounds awful. <laughs> yeah, just like a really hard output, like anaerobic power, just painful workout and tough on your kidneys. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> I ended up getting really sick after that event. And I don't, I've never gotten sick. I've been a high level athlete my mm-hmm. whole life and never like gotten actually sick. From you mean like vomiting? Vomiting, yeah. delirious, things mm-hmm. like that, which was very strange for me. Mm-hmm. So that happened. And I just kind of like dusted myself off and like sat in my lounge chair mm-hmm. for five hours. As a side <laughs> note, you just made me think of this. The only time I've ever gotten sick also as an athlete in all of the years was after a bike thruster workout <laughs> and <There> you go. <laughs> but it was also it was at the rogue invitational when i just a couple of years ago when i was not oh, in shape no. and i was on rich froning's team and so i pushed myself way too hard and got sick afterwards i've never that was, I, that was 2021 up. yeah 2021 yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I was there for that. I didn't know you were getting sick though. But <laughs> I mean, I just did after the workout a little bit. It was not like a kidney just injury, a <laughs> um, delirium, anything. I was just threw up a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> did not feel yeah. Well. Not good. And, not and, good. And to this day, that's still the only time it's happened. So yeah, yeah. So I had that, and then I went and I I did the second event Friday night. It was like a rope climb, double under thing, and um, just didn't feel great. So I went to bed, and I ended up waking up. 2 3 a.m. and just felt like my back and like my sides mm-hmm. were on fire like it, the best way i can describe it is like uh like an iron like mm-hmm. on your back and my wife's a nurse and she was a she was cardiac step down at that point mm-hmm. um like icu nurse so i just woke her up and was like hey i'm like not feeling good like yeah. something's wrong and i'd had back injuries in the past and just you get weird nerve stuff sometimes. Sure. And she was like, maybe it's just that. Like, let's see if we can go back to bed and see how you feel in the morning. It was bad enough for me to wake her up, which is like not That's normal. usually saying something, especially yeah. for a guy. <laughs> yeah. So I woke up and like no, normal routine, made my breakfast, made some coffee. And I took one sip of coffee and immediately went to the restroom, like started mm. vomiting again. And my wife was like, hey, this is not normal. And yeah. of course I was like, Nah, like, let me call Max. I was working with Max Elhaj, the TTT owner at the time. And he's like, hey, man, I agree. Like, you need to probably go to the hospital. Like, your wife's a nurse. Like, she probably knows more about both of us. And yeah. So I went and they did all my blood work. And at this point, like, I hadn't used the bathroom. I couldn't pee, like, nothing, mm-hmm. which was weird, right? Like, everything was shutting down. But it just, like, the pressure builds up talking to a doctor, like the pressure builds yeah. up and I felt like I was going to pop, but like I couldn't like pee or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so they did all the labs and they were like, Hey, you're in uh kidney failure. Like wow. this is like my, my GFR was like, I think at the time it was like 20 something. And then my creatinine was like four point something, wow. which is like not good. And then not it actually obviously got worse as I stayed, they were like, we're admitting you mm-hmm. and um, like put me on IV and all that stuff. Just and scary. Just, like, it can be rest. right. If you hadn't gone to the hospital or you wait too long, it can have some really life threatening consequences. Yeah. So. There, so I guess at the worst, it was like, I think I had like 14 or 13 GFR and like a 5.8 or something. Wow. Creatinine, which is like almost dialysis, I think. Wow. Yeah. Um, which I don't know, you can speak to that better, but that's just kind of what they told me. They're like, Hey, mm-hmm. you're like right on the way. This needs to start turning. And luckily it did. But during that, it's a slow healing. It's almost like mm-hmm. muscle soreness. When I try to like over a longer period of time, like mm-hmm. you get sore and then you slowly get better. And it takes, you takes a lot of time. Yeah. Wow. It takes a lot of time. So they ended up 
my doctor wanted to do a biopsy of my kidney mm -hmm. or my kidneys. Cause he was like, this is odd. And I guess the pathology report had suggested that I had this, uh, autoimmune disorder called IgA nephropathy, mm -hmm. which as, as you know, like is a progressive kidney disease that can cause kidney failure or progressive kidney, um, I guess lower, lowers your function over mm -hmm. any amount of time. It can be really aggressive or it can be like a slow, steady thing. Mm -hmm. Regardless, he said, Hey, probably isn't the best idea to be a pro athlete. <laughs> it's wow. tough on your kidneys. You're a 27 year old man. Like yeah. you want to have kids and have a long, healthy life. You need to make lifestyle changes. So wow. in that moment, I just made the decision and just stepped away from the sport. Um, That's wild. So going into a season, you feel really good starting to go into 2017 games season. And then you pull out of the competition with this severe, you know, medical situation and in the same span of time also decide, okay, my CrossFit Games career is going to end right now. Totally. Yeah. That's like kind of just was at peace with that mm -hmm. place. Like I had had a relatively successful athletic career. Mm -hmm. Um, up to that point in my life. And I was like, maybe this is just it. Like the, it was mm -hmm. a good run. And now I need to focus on being healthy and just find a new career. And ended up, I owned a gym at the time and mm -hmm. we sold that. And I had a, I had a member who owned a tech business and gave me a, like a junior consulting sales role. Okay. Uh, so I just started working in corporate America and like totally right different. Off the rip. Yeah. Totally different. Like, especially the tech world versus <laughs> a pro athlete world. I don't know if you've seen the show Silicon Valley, but those were like my coworkers. <laughs> and I mean, very different I, experience. Sales, yeah. Like sales is cool for me because I can talk to people and like, that's not a problem, but it was just a learning experience. Totally. So, so totally. I did learn a lot of valuable lessons there just about how the corporate sure. world works. And I got to travel internationally for business, which was really cool. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but throughout that time, I was obviously getting my kidneys checked up, mm -hmm. as anybody would. And uh, in my last visit with Dr. Shonda, who's a nephrologist here in Nashville, he wanted, like, my levels were great, um, like, no signs of any mm -hmm. any issues. And he was like, hey, let's, like, look at these pathology reports. And he kind of more or less said, hey, like, sometimes those don't tell the full story, right? Mm. Your body's in so much trauma. Mm -hmm. it, you can suggest that maybe one thing is what the cause is, but there's also a chance that that's not it. Sometimes you don't know. And yeah. Sometimes you don't know. So he was kind of like, look, I think you're, you're fine. Mm -hmm. um, obviously don't go back to what you were doing. Like as far as health goes, I need to like get a nutritionist and check my blood work. And, um, you know, don't take all these NSAIDs and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. he said, if you can do it the right way, then you could probably return to sport. So I wow. made all those very measured adjustments and kind of just went from there and ended up going back to the games in 19. And obviously 2020, the season was more or less canceled. Mm -hmm. And then every year after that, you know, we've made it back. So on a great run. Think, yeah. That's, great uh, run. So looking back, they think that it was some combination of of uh, being on NSAIDs. Sounds like you were taking a lot of NSAIDs at the time with the you know the intense training you were doing and and um, maybe dehydration or something that was kind of like the, the yeah. perfect storm for you to go into that kidney failure. Um, yeah. So so how did that? Well, one, can you just talk a little bit about that, like how the NSAIDs and then how you changed things when you went back? You said, okay, I love how you also just just made the decision. Okay. I'm ready to leave. And then when you can go back, you're like, okay, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm all yeah. in. Um, but how it had to have been different, right? Because you said you, you wanted to be more mindful and make sure that you were protecting your, your kidneys and your health overall. So what were the changes that you made at that point? Um, just to make sure that you were doing things in a healthier way. Yeah. So I, a, a lot of things and e even just not just like diet changes and making sure I was hydrating no NSAIDs I stopped drinking coffee for a period of time wow like, like a lot of things like just anything to be healthy yeah and which I you know kind of like have to be that way to like make the game so it's just kind of the way I am totally but, uh 
yeah. So even from a training, I think the biggest thing was the way I digested my training mm. because that I had a bad experience or just my body had a bad memory of going that hard. Mm. So I almost was reluctant to push myself to that place yeah. that is necessary to go to the CrossFit games. Yeah. Um, and you have to do that a lot. Mm -hmm. So I, I talked to Max and we made a plan and he was even hesitant because he was like, look, this guy's willing, obviously his nutrition and stuff wasn't the best, but he's willing to push himself to the point of his body's shutting down. Literally and do shutting I want down. to yeah. help guide that? Mm -hmm. Because that was like one of my best friends. And he's like, I don't want Will to like hurt himself and sure. ruin his life and all these things, which is a, like a commendable thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but right. cares about you. But we, yeah, he cares about me. So we, uh, it was a delicate process and it was a lot of me mentally like getting over little hurdles. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I'm going to push myself to be like laying on the floor today mm -hmm. <laughs> and, a little and bit I harder can, every time a little bit harder a little bit harder and that took a that took a bit of time yeah I can imagine um because just like that metabolic feeling mm -hmm. is I mean you get it like it's it's stressful it hurts mm -hmm. it's close to like that kidney situation same feeling ish like your body's just burning and so I had a weird another like PTSD kind yeah. of thing I had to work through and, um, I'm sure every time yeah, you I feel mean, like that lactic acid building up in your muscles, or you feel that you have that worry in the back of your head, like, are my kidneys okay? Yeah, I had, I had that mm -hmm. now, like, no, now you're, I, you know, you're I'm good. much more aware. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's been a lot better, right? I'm just, I, I work with wild health. I get yeah. blood work. Like there's just a lot more things that I have uh, given to professionals to help guide. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I take those professional, um, opinions or suggestions and apply them. And if they work, they work. If they don't, they don't. And mm -hmm. we kind of just rinse repeat. And, um, I've been relatively healthy from an internal like standpoint, obviously you're going to have mechanical issues like sore shoulders or knees or whatever it is. That's just kind of the sure. part of the game. But as far as, um, Re returning to training, those are big things, right? Nutrition, uh, understanding the training protocols we're using a bit better, mm -hmm. which that process actually gave me a really intimate understanding of what my body can handle and how I recover and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's still something I, I I'm always evolving. Uh, Absolutely. To do something. I mean, I'm 34 years old and I'm still competing with the best in the world. And there's, that's kind of like uncharted territory a little bit in our sport. Like how long can you, can mm -hmm. you keep stay at the top of the mountain? And I think that this on a deeper level has like helped me express like an innovation that's in me mm -hmm. as far as, uh, I, I want to be the, the gray head. Like I want to be the old guy <laughs> that keeps coming back. Like, and that takes innovation mm -hmm. and, I like tinkering. I, I obviously I, I speak with health professionals. We change my change my training a little bit, mm -hmm. and I think that there is a something that I like about that. I mm -hmm. like, just want to get the absolute most out of me as an athlete. And obviously, I've learned a lot. Just will as a man and a, and a human um, on this journey. Totally. But yeah, I think that 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 all of this has kind of helped me just innovate and evolve and learn how important that is totally uh, to stay relevant. Yeah. I'd love to hear about anything you you're willing to share about your experience with wild health. Like what, what intrigued you to start the process and anything, you know, if you can just share about your experience or anything that's helped, um, you know, this season. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I had in the, like, obviously through this, through the kidney thing and mm -hmm. all of that, I had become aware of the like my labs and what good yeah. numbers look like and how diet can change those. And mm -hmm. I had um, been doing that type of thing a few years prior to working with Wild Health. And then I was talking to a nutritionist of mine that um, works with a few other athletes that work with you guys. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, I think I want to uh, get some blood work so we can dial in my nutrition a little bit better mm -hmm. this year. And every year, right? Just right. this evolution Constant thing that I'm talking about. And he's in, uh, I talked to one of my training partners, B, that works with y'all. And 
she was like, Hey, I'm actually doing that. And I was like, Oh, perfect. <laughs> so I got hooked up with you guys. We did a, my initial lab draw. We had a, a console, um, that kind of helped, Hey, maybe we can change this little thing in your diet mm -hmm. or maybe take this supplement to help with inflammation markers, uh, which is more and more important when you want to keep competing and the older you get, you that's right. information, inflammation a little slower. The so, little things make a big difference. Yeah. So we just, we changed a lot of those things, mm -hmm. um, like fish oils, taking magnesium when I, before I go to bed, like just things that help expedite recovery mm -hmm. and, um, lower inflammation, just make me a healthier vessel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and it's been really helpful. I mean, obviously this is the, probably the less, the least banged up I've been. And I'm not like just selling y'all the least banged up I've been in a few years. And I think think from like a, definitely like just a general well-being sleep quality standpoint has to do with the mm -hmm. recommendations that wild health gave me um even the checkups like if, if i'll have like steve is the guy I just have my calls with and, mm -hmm. um i just have any questions i can just text him like i was i didn't really necessarily have just talking about sleep, I didn't have like a tough time getting to sleep. It was mm -hmm. staying asleep. And I, like, there's like little things like that where I'm like, Hey man, like, what do you think about this? Nothing crazy. Like I'm still performing well, but how do I tighten this up? Sure. And give me a suggestion like that. So I just really like the, the team, uh, like culture, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. that wild health has provided me it's just like there to help. Totally. And obviously we have the hard data of uh, blood work and labs and all this stuff and what I'm eating. And then we also have like the little things, like if I'm not sleeping well or, or if my training volume goes up, what can we adjust mm -hmm. to make sure that I don't like get lackadaisical with my recovery? It's just like kind of an all encompassing service that I just really value. Um, and I wish that I had that earlier in my career to be honest i mean <laughs> Me but too. i guess like I, yeah you know like it's just it's such a, neat, a good tool that just makes your job easier mm -hmm. which totally can't deny. totally and i think your point about it's it's usually it's not usually one big thing it's the combination of a bunch of little things and all the little things that you became a more aware of and started changing after your kidney injury and then mm -hmm. now are constantly on that pursuit of like, what are the little less than 1% things that I can change? It's, you know, how can I make my sleep a little bit better? What supplements Absolutely. can I take? And, and, and it's cool to see that not only, you know, now you're probably a much better athlete, like, you know, physically, mentally, but, um, you know, not w where I think of you in 2017, if you were taking a bunch of NSAIDs all the time, obviously that meant you had a lot of inflammation and you were in a lot yeah. of pain. And so now it's the combination of ha having, being more in tune with your training, um, and what you're doing physically, but also how you're supporting those other aspects from nutrition to sleep and recovery and, and supplements and things like that. So that's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think like the, it's a maturity, I think, like, and, and obviously this is such an amazing tool mm -hmm. for me because um, it kind of takes care of mm -hmm. all of like the stuff under the hood that is very important. But the, the maturity to al allow myself to evolve or allow myself to listen to experts, mm -hmm. because I think especially when you, you get a like, confirmation bias as a young athlete mm -hmm. and you have success early and you just want to do the same thing over and over and over. Yeah. And I could not do the same thing when I was 27. It's just not sustainable. Yeah. So just having the, I guess it's the maturity or just the growth to kind of let other people help direct mm -hmm. and, um, let those, let things happen more naturally. But your body gives you feedback. Totally. Like, you got to listen to yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> you got to listen. So that's maybe right. it's just that. That's right. It's cool. I always like to think about too, what are the silver linings? And you, I'm sure you've wondered like, what if that hadn't happened in 2017 and you had just continued to beat yourself up for a few more years? Would you have ever gone back to the games or would you have ever done as well? Like right, right now today, sitting here in 2023, would you be in as great of a position as you are, or 
would it be different because of that wake up call to say, Hey, I need to pay attention to my labs and my nutrition and, yeah. you know, all these other things that as a young athlete, you don't often have to pay attention to because your body is so resilient and you are going to continue to thrive and improve. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy, right? Like it's, it comes easy and it's when things get hard that it's the real test of professionalism mm -hmm. or, you know, it circumstances a lot too, right? Like I have been around, like I got hooked up with wild health for, through a friend, like that's nice. Um, mm -hmm. I have really great healthcare in Nashville. So like, I think it is circumstance totally. a little bit. And I've been fortunate to just be around the right people at the right time to mm -hmm. help, you know, serve my career. Yeah. But, um, yeah, just got to keep evolving, I suppose. And totally. And put the right people in your corner. Totally. How do you think that time away from competing, you know, obviously it then led to a lot of these things in terms of improving your training and your overall health long term. But how do you think it improved your, just your mentality? Like you said, it, as a professional athlete, it becomes so much of your identity. And I'm sure that was a big shift for you, um, going away yeah. and then coming back, but how has it made you sort of mentally stronger or just better as a person in general? Yeah, I think I just appreciate it more. Mm -hmm. Like being a, a pro, being a human is a sprint, right? It's a short time <laughs> yeah. here, but like being a pro athlete is just even a glitch, like a little blip on the radar. And I just allowed sport to be, it, it was too much. It stressed me out. Obviously I was like, just doing anything to stay on the floor and abusing myself and mm -hmm. that caused stress and in an unhealthy way obviously and now I've just when you go through something like that it, it provides perspective and I think I really now more than ever I've just leaned on these tough moments to learn mm -hmm. because they are great teaching opportunities. Anything hard we go through, name it. Mm -hmm. You can absorb it and it can be really bad. Mm -hmm. And it can be be a spiraling effect of just negativity and no growth. Or, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying ignore emotion, but, or it can be a positive thing. And, I'm, and obviously, like, that was a tough mental mm -hmm. time for me. But it was an opportunity to grow. And... I think that's the way I spun it when the doctor said, Hey, you can go back to sport. I mm -hmm. was like, well, this is a second opportunity. Yeah. Like, and I'm still young and I'm still passionate about sport. And I learned a lot from that first career, if mm -hmm. you will. Mm -hmm. And let's see if I can apply those lessons and do even better. Mm -hmm. And I've spun that kind of a headspace into a lot of hardship in my life. And uh, it doesn't make it, better but it maybe it does make it better i mean i think if you can spin negativity into something positive to help you or help the people around you mm -hmm. um improve then i think that that's a that's a good way of looking at it. it's a healthy way mm -hmm. of looking at it and it helps me it's helped me help out friends or even mm -hmm. acquaintances who have dealt with hardship and just try to spin these tough times into something positive for them. Um, which is something I like a lot in this point in my career. Like yeah. I like sharing what I've learned. I like sharing the tricks of the trade. Like what's the point of me going through all these things and having relative success with it? If I'm not going to share it and like help other people and enrich their lives. And just, if you can help somebody when they're down in the dumps, mm -hmm. then they'll remember that you just, you did, you did them a solid and you spent the time to talk to them. And I've had so many messages on like social media and stuff, just people with kidney stuff. Or like my wife was sick last year. Like, yeah, this is our situation. And like, I think that that's, that's enriching. That, that gives me fulfillment just as much as making the CrossFit games totally. and ma maybe more to be real. Like, cause that's being able to articulate your thoughts and mm -hmm. help help people work through their emotions is more lasting than you know like running around the coliseum which don't get me right. wrong is awesome still and i love awesome. it and it doesn't right. it's so awesome still it gives awesome. me goosebumps to think about it in a few sure. weeks but yeah like i think i get fulfillment from helping i guess like sharing what i've learned through 
you know, my experiences life with others. So. Absolutely. And I think that's such a key part of just the CrossFit community in general, right? Is we support each other. We lift each other up when we're going through a hard time, whether it's finishing last in a workout or you just are going through something tough. And so you have this big platform to be able to reach people and you, you know, you've gone through hard things so people can relate to you when they're going through hard things and say, well, how did, how's Will get through it? And he's thriving now. Um, so yeah. it's really cool to see you be so open with that and share. And, and I have to ask too, just about your wife's experience. So she, you know, you yeah. said she was sick last year. She was diagnosed with cancer at the age of 30, yeah. which is just crazy. And so I'd love to hear just a little bit about what that experience was like for the two of you, um, or has been like for the two of you and how you've approached it. Cause it's another, you know, big adversity for both of you yeah. at such a young age when it comes to, to health. Yeah. Yeah. So right after the games in 21, um, she was diagnosed with breast cancer mm -hmm. and started treatment right away. So that was, she got the, diagnosis maybe early September and then like treatment was right after wow. that they just kind of like layer it in and they're like yeah. we just got to get ahead of this and um that was like that was very challenging um just on every aspect of life right uh like emotionally like we were planning on starting to have a family right yeah. after the games and then it was like actually you can do the exact opposite thing and so we we did all of, like went through that just headspace which was quick because we're like well no we got to get her healthy mm -hmm. <laughs> like we yeah. got to deal with the cancer first and all the treatment plans and the surgeries and all these things and mm -hmm. um yeah so we uh we got right into that and it was it's a another per chance for perspective and mm -hmm. that was a much harder chance or a harder uh dose of it mm -hmm. <laughs> if you will like yeah i can i could deal with my own stuff because it's me and i'm tough and mine was very acute and in in the nature of the sickness mm -hmm. and um i got better quickly whereas in her case obviously they were like you should be okay based on the data but you never, you never know, know right it's a scary diagnosis so, no matter what yeah. So we started the treatment plan and, um, she, she started responding well to the treatment plan, like immediately, mm. which was pretty amazing to see, like just how the medicine works. Mm -hmm. And, um, about a year and a little over a year later, like through all the treatments and the surgeries, she's good. And, uh, I, I mean, I'm not going to say we were like glad we had to go through that because obviously that's horrible and I would never, I'd love to never have done that. Mm -hmm. But the same thing for her. I've seen her, like all these people in the CrossFit community, which my wife is like a, she's not like Miss Social, right? Like she's kind of <laughs> quiet. She does her thing and she's a, she's a NICU nurse. So she's like, yeah. she's obviously a caring soul. And, yeah. Um, but she's had a ton of people reach out to her. Like, that's amazing. And just ask, and she's, She's been amazing, like a light, I think, for those people. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, she worked through her whole treatment, wow. which is pretty incredible. Uh, she urged me to continue to train throughout the whole year, which is another just kind of cool. She said, let's just keep life as normal as we can and train as much as you can. And obviously, like, I trained at home a lot more mm -hmm. <laughs> just because cancer treatment and, yeah. you know, and all these things are they take over your life and you mm -hmm. need to be there to support mm -hmm. because it's just an, it's an ugly process. And, um, yeah, we, uh, we learned a lot and we're so fortunate to have such great healthcare here in Nashville to, uh, help guide that treatment plan. Mm -hmm. And, um, we're good now. I mean, she, she has to get, uh, like checkups. I think it's once a year now just general stuff. I think she does blood work a little bit more frequently just mm -hmm. to make sure everything's in line. But yeah, it, it was, it was a big punch in the face, but I think just the way we are, we kind of roll with the punches and it could, we're, we're fortunate, right? Like it's, mm -hmm. it's not that good for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but we obviously, she was, she had, she was lucky to just crush it and life was, as good as it, I guess it could have been considering all the stuff that goes go through. with the yeah. cancer treatment. 
Um, and the support we received, I think was also just a boost and not normal. I would say like the CrossFit community and things like that were huge. Mm -hmm. And I think that that could, that helped, you know, like all these complete strangers were reaching out to her and she's like, Hey, look look at this. (laughs) And I'm like, Hey, like, this is awesome. People care about you, don't even know you. Totally. Um, How cool is that? That's a pretty special that's, experience. Yeah, that's the community that just time. says, hey, you know, Will's wife, we got to support her and help out. And they yeah. jump to it. That's amazing. Totally. So, yeah, it was tough. That's, that's not, a, that wasn't like the best year, but we made the most of it. And um, She's good now. Yeah. So. Well, I'm so glad she's, she's back doing to work. Well. Yeah. yeah. I'm so she's glad good. she's doing well. And it sounds like you both just have such a resilient, strong attitude for all through all of these challenges. Um, has it changed for both of you over these last few years and going through each of your own health scares? Has that changed your perspective on thinking about your own health and longevity in any way or, or whether it's your perspective or anything that you do differently in life? Oh yeah. I I think, uh, it's a real like reality check, (laughs) um, when you go through health scares because you get one life and it's such a fragile thing Mm -hmm. and it's kind of a blessing in a way to gain that perspective as a young person, because it's easier to correct an NSAID thing. Obviously Cass's situation wasn't like something she did wrong. It was just like that happened Mm -hmm. sometimes and like that sucks. Mm -hmm. But from, from my standpoint, um, in my situation, I just learned a bit more. I could undo the bad Mm -hmm. easier, Mm -hmm. you know, as a 27 year old, um, but I think even in her thing, like she was working night shift and stuff. And she was like, ah, that's probably not the best shift work probably isn't the best. And she's like day shift and like a normal yeah. adjustment. That's probably the biggest thing. I mean, we eat healthy. And mm-hmm. obviously, like I have a whole doctor's team that works with me and she has the same now. Mm-hmm. So um, we're doing the thing, the little things mm-hmm. that add up that so we can live long, healthy yeah. lives. Uh, God, I mean, God forbid we have another like situation like that which isn't in our hands anyways mm-hmm. but everything that we we just try to control the controllables and um then yeah let, let the cards fall you know and totally that's I think that that's been big for us that's really cool i think i think even the example about nice shift is a great example because how many people probably go through life knowing doing any any anything just knowing that it's probably not the best for my health, but it's just what I do. And it's just like the situation that I'm in. Um, and then when you have something that really shocks you like that or changes your perspective, mm-hmm. you might think differently about those things and say, oh, maybe it is in my control to change this um, is something yeah. that is one of those controllables. So that's super cool. I know we look at for our patients in our health report, we look at a lot of sleep genetics and some of them specifically are around that, you know, alterations in circadian rhythm and cancer risk. And so, especially for people who are at higher risk for that, then maybe it does make sense to be more proactive, you know? Yeah, definitely. Wow. Um, well, I just love your perspective. I, uh, I'd love to hear, um, if you can share what, since you're an open book and you want to share with everyone what you learned, <laughs> what your what does a day in your life look like right now? You're, you know, weeks out from the CrossFit games, you're at the peak of training. Um, you know, what are what are the things that you're doing from, you know, sleep, nutrition, recovery, training that um that are typical for you? You want the whole thing? Oh yeah, let's go for it. The whole thing. All right. <laughs> so I we'll start the night before. So I try to go to bed. 10. Okay. 10 is probably realistic. Yeah. Nine would be better, but Cass gets home at like 7 38. <laughs> and I'm trying to like hang out at with least her, her. Yeah. a little bit before I go to bed. And then, so I wake up around eight, um, full glass of water, uh, and some salts and all the vitamins mm-hmm. that Wild Health told me to take. <laughs> Feed my dog, start my coffee uh have all of the nutrition that's dialed in by wild health mm-hmm. literally you guys control my life <laughs> and <laughs> it's a good thing and then i will uh just like sit with 
my puppy who just turned one yesterday. Aww. He's a huge boy now, 100 pounds. But he's oh, one. wow. So he's not just a puppy. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's a mastiff. So just a <laughs> grizzly bear. But I'll sit with him and just have my coffee in the morning and maybe read a little bit. And then I'll drive into the gym, uh, train from 9.30 to 12-ish, eat, get some body work if uh, our body work guy's at the gym, train again in the afternoon, and then I'll come home. Uh, I usually sauna at night. Mm. I just got one of those Sisu saunas. I'm actually looking at it right now. Nice. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Which has been a lot of fun. And actually my genetics for you guys are like great for sauna. So that's kind of a cool thing. There's a lot of bro science out there that's like sauna is good. Ice is good. And I'm like, yeah, but like get your genes tested and might not actually be good. (laughs) So it's great for me. So I'll do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I like it a bit later. It just gives me time to like between my last session Mm -hmm. to cool down again before I get in the sauna. And then it's closer to bed anyways, which is what was suggested that I do. So I sleep a bit harder, Mm -hmm. um, which has been awesome. And rinse and repeat and that is crossfit games training That's it. and there's a whole lot of training in In the, yeah, in those training periods, a whole lot of stuff, a whole lot of food, but (laughs) that's pretty much that's it. I call it monk life. Which yeah. I love it's yeah. just so simple and it's very objective. And mm-hmm. um yeah, I got five more weeks of that monk life and That's... get to get to go to the show. It's exciting. And it makes it all worth it when you get there and you know you've put in the work and you're ready to go. So that's awesome. Absolutely. That's awesome. Any um if you could pick three things that you do now that you wish you would have known about or you wish you would have done back in 2013 or 14 or even back when you were playing soccer, what are those things? Back when I was playing soccer, I wish I I wish I was as hard of a worker then as I am now. Mm. And in that from that standpoint, because I thought I was always and I probably was relative to my teammates doing the most like fitness and training and stuff. Mm-hmm. But there's always like what I learned now, there's always a little bit more you could do. I could have sure. had better nutrition. I could have like not been a college kid <laughs> and like party <laughs> and, and do all that life, stuff. Yeah. yeah, which I think there's value there too. Sure. But, um yeah, I think that there my phone just oh, there we go. Cool. Um so as a as a soccer player, I think that like having that discipline mm-hmm. that I have now mm-hmm. then probably would have been advantageous and maybe made that like pro opportunity a little better, but hindsight's twenty twenty. Okay. What do you think has um, helped you with that now? I mean, I know you work you train now with the best, the best, um, and obviously environment, I'm sure seeing what other people do and having that positive environment makes a big difference. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I've, I've learned a lot just from being around T and Shane and Brooke and Saxon and street and Colty and Sid and like all these games athletes that I've just, it's it's lucky to be able to pull from all of them. All of them are great at different things. Mm -hmm. And I think that they would say the same, like everybody can give to the the culture in a different way. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm just aware of like little habits that I can pick up or little things that I could help them with. And it's a, it's a healthy environment, um, from that standpoint, but just speaking to like teen Shane, it's, and like the greatest to have done our sport, Mm -hmm. you, there is, there is a healthy demand of excellence Mm -hmm. that I like to be around. And, um, I think I've always had a little bit of that in me, just like playing high level soccer. It's just, it's like very similar, right? Yeah. You're striving. Obviously I didn't play like the best soccer players in the world, but I've been in professional environments where people mm-hmm. are getting paid to play a sport mm-hmm. other than CrossFit. And it's, I would say it's harsher in that world relative to other camps that I've been in in CrossFit mm-hmm. where there is an expectation and we're going to stick to that. Mm-hmm. And I, I like that. Uh, it, you can pull that energy and it, you just get more out of your own training. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the whole camp has absorbed that to an extent. Obviously, everybody has their own journey and their own processes. But 
we all have grabbed like little things. Sure. And I think it helps elevate all of us if you allow it to. And I think that perspective is one that's growing in the camp. It's something that I've practiced for a long time. And I think that the others would too. I guess we haven't like sat and chatted about this directly, but mm-hmm. uh, it helps to have really good training partners. Totally. <laughs> totally. That's amazing. Yeah. I think that's something I wish I would have had more during my time. I think I always had great training partners in terms of we had the same coach, we're following the same programming, but to be in person with them on a regular basis and have that interaction, I think is so valuable. Um, for me, it was always like every few months, you know, that we, we yeah. train in person. So it's a little different. Yeah. That's like awesome. that accountability is something that can't be under mm-hmm. understated. Mm-hmm. Like there, there's just energy. I always I say like you pull energy yeah. from your training partners Absolutely. and that, and that's a real thing. I think it's important to be able to do it on your own also. Like mm-hmm. I like training in my garage solo still mm-hmm. kind of like keeps you sharp yeah like the jason um, klepa what is rich doing yeah like, in his rich, yeah sure like yeah, yeah. Like it keeps the feed the wolf right? yeah like i think that that's important because it is an individual sport mm-hmm. but both are valuable both are very valuable yeah definitely. well i just i totally hijacked the question so three things that you wish you would have done so one of is the work ethic or or the the excellence um that yeah, you were striving yeah, yeah. for any any others other things that I would change. Yeah. Or things or that you do I now, knew, things that you do now that you wish you would have done, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah, definitely. Like tracking all my health stuff, mm. not to keep beating the dead horse, but that's so valuable. Mm-hmm. Like what you put, it, it matters what kind of gas you put in the tank. And like, yeah. essentially I'm an F1 car, just a human. And like <laughs> you got to make sure everything is aligned. On that note, I think body work, regular body mm-hmm. work, even when I thought I didn't need it when I was young and more resilient or just less aware mm-hmm. of how I was feeling, I think that having eyes on you that maybe not necessarily like a biomechanist or anything, mm-hmm. but like somebody who understands like body movement and yeah. any uh, compensation patterns, maybe a little bit more of that could have helped mitigate any other injuries I've had or sure. overuse things throughout my career. So I've had a ton of injuries. Um, so that more regular body work. And I think just general, generally be less stressed Mm. and just enjoy the process and trust, trust your ability. It's like, obviously you had it. I have it like any, once you make the show, like, and you compete at the highest level, like you have the ability I I understand you have to strive and push yourself, mm-hmm. but there's sometimes a stress attached to that mentality that can impede progress mm-hmm. and impede your life outside the gym, which will indirectly impede what happens in the gym. And just respecting that more. Yeah. And I think that obviously I learned that the hard way, <laughs> just through just getting sick and totally. all these injuries and things like that. But definitely just be a little less stressed, enjoy the process. Um, and have fun with it because if you're good at it, it's you're better at it if you're enjoying it. If you're enjoying it. it. Absolutely. I just love that. I think that it's just such a life lesson for all of us in every area of life. There's you want to work as hard as you can work and be the best you can be and always strive to win or strive for, for that excellence. But sometimes when we get so attached to the outcome, um, it can make, we can actually self-sabotage in a lot of ways, like you said, because we're, yeah. we're adding so much stress or pressure that's taking away from us, just, you know, letting our natural abilities shine. So I love that. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with me. Will. this was awesome. I'm glad yeah, we finally 10 years later got to yeah, <laughs> actually have yeah. a conversation and, yeah, uh, sure. you know, we'll, I'll be cheering you on at the games this year, everybody from wild health. I know will, and, are just really proud to be part of your support team. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoy listening to the podcast, please consider subscribing and giving it a five-star rating on iTunes. It really does help to get the word out to more people.